everyone. Welcome to Adobe Live. I'm Shauna Lynn. This is Teddy Bear, my very good studio mate. How are you guys? What's new? What's happening? What's going on? I see Tim in the chat. I see Missy, Michelle, Teresa, Shan, uh, Andreas, Sean. Hello, everybody. Hi, Sarah. Hi, James. Where are you guys tuning in from today? Hi, Tunch. How are you? Um, yeah, welcome to the chat. Welcome to Behance Live. We're gonna have some fun today. Yeah, we got Teddy. Listen, I'd always said, I've been on, on Adobe Live a few times now, and I always said one of these days I'm gonna get Teddy on Adobe Live, and I did it from my home, from my home studio, but it counts. He's still on, right? He's just what everyone comes for, and he's a good boy. Yes, you are. Um, yeah, so we've got people from San Antonio, we've got Wisconsin. Oh, hey, fellow Midwest person. Hello. Um, we're supposed to get snow tonight. I'm not looking forward to that. Like, I love snow, but I'm ready for, I'm ready for boating season. Um, hi, Martha. Hello, hello, hello. Yes, everyone's loving Teddy. Um, yeah, so... Today, welcome to Adobe Live. Today we're going to, if you were here yesterday, you saw that we decided to, we were um, outlining a coloring book page I did for Adobe. Uh, Adobe has a coloring book, uh, a coloring book chapter every week that they're putting out. They're putting out their own coloring book online and you can get it. Um, I believe the link is in the description and you can get this week's, which is like Jessica Hish, Lisa Congdon, Adam JK, um, Brian Yap, myself, a couple other people. It's great great number you know I'm in great company um but so we we went and we outlined it yesterday and then today we're going to color it and I'm going to show you how I use Adobe color to limit my color palette and keep things very simple and then I'll use um different tones and shades of the color in order to in order to uh fill it in so that way it looks like there's more colors than there are but it's a lim it's a way to limit it so before we get started, I'm going to share the schedule with you guys today. We've got myself, um, followed by the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge with Kathleen. We've got Adobe Video, Adobe Video, God, uh, <laughs> Adobe Video live stream series with Jason Levine, the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge with Julie Masalska, um, the Adobe Live Graphic Design with Emily Poulin and Andrew Hockrattle. The Adobe XD Daily Creative Challenge with Jesse Showalter. The Draw Along with Kyle Webster, which is really fun. I highly recommend you tune in. It's a, it's very much like a modern Bob Ross uh, stream. He's he's very His stream is very calm and very relaxing. And then we're ending the day with Designing in 3D with my friend Alex Lazarus, um, who did some really interesting stuff with type yesterday. So let's get started. I'm going to put... I'm going to put... Mr. Teddy down. Yeah, he has no idea who I'm talking to. He's used to this. He's I've streamed the entire time that I've I've had him. I've had him for seven years and he's used to it. He's used to just being thrown on camera and he's it's he doesn't look like he's got much personality right now, but five minutes ago he was throwing a cookie around the bed and going nuts. So Alright, I'm gonna put you down. Come on. Yeah, there you go. And give him a reward for being such a good boy. Go get your cookie. All right, so we're gonna get started. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna be coloring this in Photoshop. You can use your program of choice, so like Adobe Fresco works, Photoshop works. I think, a, I don't, is Adobe Sketch a thing still? Is that still a program? I think it is. Pretty sure, like you can use your tablet, you can use your, your computer. You can also just print it out and, and color it um, all you want. That works too. So um, I'm gonna show you like kind of what I did first. So you've got two options. I have my my outline from yesterday. So I can draw, I can make this the top layer and I can just draw under it. Um, or I have the official from Adobe printed sheet, which is a little smaller. They formatted it, they have like the official logo, it's all all fancy. And um, that you would set, you can put in your document by I, yeah, I don't want to rasterize yet. I don't want to rasterize at all. Um, you'd go to file and you go to place embedded. You can do place linked, but I like to embed my files if I'm doing something like this where it's going to stay versus like place linked is something that I would do for um, like reference material that I really am not going to keep. 
So I would go place embedded and then I'd pull my file in. So what I'm gonna do with this one is I'm going to set it to multiply and I'm gonna use that as the top layer. I'm gonna lock it and then I'm gonna create a new folder. I'm gonna call this color and then I'm gonna create a new layer. And the other option you can do is you could put the layer on top and you could set the color layer to multiply, which would allow it allow it to um, be essentially painted on, but you still see your lines underneath. So, what are you saying? It should still be out there. Oh, you talk about the link. Yeah, like everything. I mean, it's still all, everything should be up and it should be in the in the um, description still. So we should be good. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to start off by showing you guys Adobe Cool. Well, I, I constantly still call it Adobe Cooler because that's what it was when I was in school. So like this has been around for a long time. Um, and I love Adobe Color. I think it's fantastic. It's a great way to get really solid, really nice color palettes. But like you can also look at like what other people have done. So I've created a, a Adobe library folder for this event. So I'm going to save this one. I'm going to call it brights because this was like a default one that popped up and I kind of really like it. And I just, I want to save it for now. And you can choose to publish it if you want. Um, for now, I am not going to publish it. I'm just going to leave it and keep, well, eh, I'll publish it. Why not? So I'm going to save that to my, to my library that I'll be able to pull out straight from Photoshop. Um, but if I wanted to change this up, I could make it a monochromatic palette, which is, oh gosh, that's a really nice one too. I'm going to save. Um, you can do a triad, which is also like, this, this is a really solid palette, y'all. Um, these aren't so good, but like you can take a base palette and you can adjust it based on like what you're looking for. This is nice. I like these for sketching. Um, so you can drop in a file so you could drop in an image. Let me see if I can, if I have one of Teddy that I can yank in. It's not a great photo of him. Let's see. Here we go. Here's a good picture of my bub. Let's see if it'll work. Cause I don't know. Ah, no, it's a, it's a weird Apple phone connecting. So I'm hoping that things are okay. Just let me know if I'm still up and live. Cause that would be bad. Okay. We're good. We're good. Fingers crossed this like works. Cause I haven't had issues yet. Knock on wood. Um, okay. Yeah. So we can Teddy maxed out the internet. Yeah. Teddy maxed out the internet. So I'm going to take these, I'm going to adjust these two colors cause I'm not, a two, I, I really don't care from, I don't have a ton to pull from in this photo, but like you could, there's a, a app on your phone that you can also use this with. Um, let me confirm what it's called because I have it and I love it. Adobe capture. That's it. So you can go in Adobe capture. You can go outside, you can take a photo um, and you can pull colors directly from that photo. So if you see a tree you really like, you know, or you see a building you really like, or you see a painting you really like, like you can make colors from that. It's great. It's really cool. And it syncs to your Adobe CC library. So things are, I think things are pretty cool. Things are pretty cool. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna yank this over here. I'm gonna go for this more navy color and then this will not be the palette I use for this for this project. It's just too too dark for this for this coloring book. But I just like I want to show you guys like what Adobe Color is capable of. Let's go for this like dark, Ooh, right? That's kind of nice. So I'm gonna remove. I'm gonna adjust this. I could pull from his nose. Um, <laughs> I love my dog. Can you tell? Yeah, there's so there's not a lot of color to pull from in here, but um, you can also reload a photo. So we're just going to I'm going to save it, it like this for now, and I'm just going to call this Teddy. And I'm going to save it. But then you can also what's color get? Ooh, Adobe's getting fun. Um, I'm not going to do that right now. So you can also go up to up to the top here and then you have the option to create, you explore trends in my library. So if I go to trends, we can see all the current trends in color, which is really, really fun. All in, I mean, trends in color, styles, 
stock, all that, but we're going to go to explore. So right now the default is the color of the year, this classic Pantone blue. Um, I don't want to try gradients right now. So we can look at color themes. We can look at creative projects. So I'm going to look at the most used. Let's see what the option is here. This is nice. So I'm going to save this to my CC library. This one's nice too. And I'm going to save that to my CC library. I like to hoard color palettes. Um, this is a, this is a bad habit of mine, but I love to hoard color palettes. So let's work with like the ones I've picked so far. I'm going to grab this one too, just in case I need a green and I'm not getting the green I want. Cause I like this as well. This is really kind of a nice color. And the cool thing with these is you can take this and you can adjust it. <clears throat> Sorry. You can adjust it later on, but you can also get all of your, all of your color codes from just from this. So like if you're doing stuff for a client, you can get everything you need right here. It's awesome. It's really great. It's a great system. So we're going to go back to our document. I'm going to close this out so I can see everything on my screen again. Um, your displacement file share with me. What? Oh, okay. He's asking Tim. Um, yeah. So we're going to pop in here and then I keep my, my libraries in my, in my toolbar here. I like to have quick access to them. So as you can see, here is, here are the color palettes that I hoarded and I don't know which one I'm going to go with yet, but I'm kind of thinking this one right here is, is really nice. And it might be a combo of these two because I don't think this dark blue is necessary. And I think this green might be really nice. So I'm going to set this whole thing to multiply. So my whole group is multiply. If I set each individual layer to multiply, it's going to, it's going to um, lay over all of the colors themselves. And then they're going to be really awkward and it's going to, you don't want to do that. You just want to set your, your whole group to color. And I'm going to color in sections like I did yesterday. So I'm using from the brushes that I gave you hard edge color fill. And we're going to zoom in and I'm going to call this lettering just so I can keep it in check and you can do this as well I'm going to close this as for now you can do this in Adobe Fresco you can set your layer to uh, multiply to color in your pages um, and that is just selecting the layer and then you go up to the top right corner and there's a bar that looks like this and it's got like three dots that's where you you'll find your your layer um, your adjustment layers and things. So you can set your layer, um, you can, yeah, you can set the layer to mask. So here we go. And the nice thing with this is this is the, this is the easy part. And then what I might do is I might go and just slightly adjust the color so it's a little lighter so that all my letters aren't the same color so I'll bounce back and forth between this lighter and this um this this like slightly muted and then more vibrant coral color also yesterday guys we had a ton of fun and we got into a like really good conversation at the end about like kind of finding your stride and figuring out your your path and stuff and how to get clients and things early on. And I'm so glad it was recorded because sometimes I just start talking about things and I go into a tangent and I've got, I like to think I have a lot of really good advice and then I end up like forgetting five minutes later, everything I said, because I go in, it's such a stream of consciousness thing that I don't remember what I said five minutes later. So I'm glad that these are recorded. So if you want like that, that advice, you can watch yesterday's session. So I'm just going back and forth. I'm using the, um, the color picker, which when you're drawing with your brush, if you just hit the alt key, it'll, it'll activate the color picker. If you guys are chatting over in YouTube, we're over on Behance, be.net slash live. Um, that's where the party is. That's where the cool kids are hanging out. 
Chat's a little quieter today than it was yesterday, but that's okay because we're having fun. This is like this is more like the Bob Ross version of the stream where it's there's 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 no mistakes, only happy accidents, and we're just gonna we're gonna call her and we're gonna make it our own world. So you'll see like how these are changing color and how it's just got a little bit of bounce because of the color. It's it's allowing it to come forward and recess a little bit, which is great. It's a great way to to do it. Um, but yeah, if you guys are over on YouTube, the I'm laughing at, I can see the chat. I'm laughing at some of the comments I'm seeing in there, but um, I'm responding to everything that's on Behance. Uh, I work on a Mac. Sorry, I did not watch yesterday's and maybe it was covered. What are you using to draw? What type of a tablet? I'm happy to answer that every time. I really don't mind because um, that's, that's asked every time I stream. I'm on a Cintiq. Um, I have a Cintiq 24 inch um, tablet, so it's a big, big guy. Um, and it's like, this does not come with a stand. You have to buy the stand separately, but I have a stand so that I can lift this up and work um, and adjust the, the angle that I work at because um, a thing I learned in my 20s, which <laughs> I learned in my 20s that it's, it's not fun to, um, to hurt your back. <laughs> um, and I am pretty sure I got like some like repetitive like injuries and things just from looking at my looking at my um, tablet. I had a Cintiq 13 inch prior and it was sitting on my desk. So I was constantly working like this where I was looking down and that puts a lot of strain right back here. Um, and that's not good for you, especially if you are like like I do, I get I get into a role of working and I forget to stop and do and like stretch. So like it's really important that you open up your arms, you stretch, you stretch your hands, all this. I didn't do that in my 20s. So now in my early 30s, I'm paying for it, which is why I got the big tablet so that I'm not looking flat down so much. My head is more on a straight angle. Um, and also so that I can like sit in my chair and I'm not leaning over my tablet. Um, so it's like, I really like the Cintiq. There are a lot of comparable options you can look on youtube for reviews and things people have done reviews of like the I, i'm gonna mispronounce it i think the huon tablets um and then there's a few others that i don't remember the names of but they do exist so there are comparable um more cost effective options wacom's getting a little better about making tablets that are a little more cost friendly for people but they're still you know they are still very expensive and i recognize that um but I've been working on a Cintiq for a long time. I worked on an Intuos tablet for about 10 years prior to that. And that's the kind where you're drawing down here, but you're looking up here. So you, it's like, this is the drawing that you do, which probably was better for my neck and stuff because I wasn't looking down at my tablet. I learned how to feel out where things would go and I could recognize it on my screen. And it's, it, it's a little bit of a learning curve, but like once you get it down, you get it. And I used to do photo retouching and stuff with that at work. And um, back when I worked uh, in house for a company, I did a lot of I did photo retouching and things. So I it like let me be really accurate because I didn't like using a mouse to do that because I didn't have that same accuracy. Um, so I do the I do the the uh, Cintiq tablet now though because it just it didn't. It made my, I don't want to say it improved my work because I could do all this on the Intuos, but it made, it made my work more accurate. So I think that was, that made it easier for me because then it kind of, it sped up my process and made my work more accurate, but I could do everything that I do now. I could do it on, on an Intuos. Um, Yes, it's yes. This was post uh, yesterday's video was posted. You should be able to watch it in the replays. We outlined this. I I got about halfway through yesterday because outlining takes forever, and also because we were having really great conversations. And sometimes, like doing this, it's a lot easier for me to talk and work at the same time because when I do sketches, I can't talk and work um, because I end up especially if I'm doing lettering sketches. If I'm doing illustration sketches, it's not as bad because I'm not writing out words. Um, it's only when I'm doing lettering sketches that I can't talk when I'm doing them because I will inevitably write what I'm saying. 
or I will lose my train of thought or I will misspell things. I'm gonna just get this one color done first and I'm just gonna alternate it. But how's everyone doing? How are you? How are you with everything going on? Um, I'm very excited. I, For those that have been following me a long time, you know that I figure skate. So I've been off the ice for about four or five weeks now. And the last time I was on, I was only on once. So I've technically like been off for like five weeks, um, which is the longest time I've been off in a long time. And I... Like, honestly, the last time I was off for a decent amount of time, it was about three weeks. And it was last year, January, when I was traveling for my for Adobe Live out in San Francisco and then to Detroit for to go watch the and volunteer at U.S. Figure Skating Championships and then back home. And then I got sick. So I was off for like three weeks straight because I was just getting over travel and cold. Um, but I've been going nuts because I can't I can't go ice skate. And I, um, so I ended up finding artistic inline skates, um, and just, just like the blade frame that I can mount to a pair of boots that I already have. And they had to come from Spain and they, um, they had to come from Spain and they weren't looking like they were going to ship anytime soon. And then they texted me on, or they emailed me on Tuesday and they're like, we were able to ship them this morning. And I was like, Oh, exciting. And it was, they're supposed to come tomorrow. They're coming today. So I'm going to run to my storage unit, um, practice social distancing because no one is there. And I'm going to pick up my old, my old boots that I think might work better than the ones I have in my room. And I'm going to mount these skates and I'm going to try roller skating in line figure skating. And we're going to see how that works. So it'll be, that's going to be my weekend. It's gonna be my weekend, but I'm excited. I'm really excited. Um, ha, fun question. Hope you make it back to the skating rink soon. These are strange days, but great for working on a WCC skills. Yeah, I agree. Um, I'm, I'm used to, to, um, yeah, I lost my train of thought. Uh, I have a good friend that skates and she's really missing it. Yeah. It's like, for those of us that like rely on an ice rink, it's very hard right now. Um, and I admittedly have not been doing my off ice exercise right now because, uh, life, you know, um, but yeah, no, this is a good time. This is a good time. If you have the mental energy to work on new skills, um, you know, I have had a lot of days where I just, I get up and I work for a little while and then I'm just like, I'm not feeling it anymore. I need to just go play animal crossing. And that's what I do. And I think it's important to take care of your mental health. Very important. Um, but it is a good time too if you have the energy and the time and the mental aware you know the mental capacity um it does you can um you you know it is a good time to learn a new skill like i'm planning on learning how to do like like traditional digital painting if that makes sense like the kind where you like you layer 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 like voodoo val style stuff like that's what i want to learn like voodoo val and anna davis court do it so well and I want to learn how to do that and then I also want to improve my my children's illustration style because Cody Bear inspired me like crazy yesterday on Okay. Yeah, I guess knock on wood. This is the first time I've had issues in the last, this is my fourth stream from home. This is the first time I've had issues. So I consider that pretty good. Um, I should have probably done a reset on the, on the Wi-Fi router before I hopped on today. Cause I think it just got overloaded last night. Um, But yeah, I'm back on here Monday and Tuesday. I will be demoing Adobe Fresco. So this will be fixed by then. Um, like I said, haven't had issues prior to this. So we're just going to hope and pray that this continues to work. Um, 
But yeah, like switching back and forth between those games, my I got very dizzy going back to The Witcher, so I went back to Animal Crossing. So I was like, I can't can't handle this. Um, I'm a complete newbie to PS. How are you coloring within the lines so well? Is it a steady hand or something you can set on Photoshop? Um, so the line, the actual file is a separate layer. So if you, <laughs> it's not that pretty. Yeah. Like I have these on and then I have my color group set to multiply because if I turn off multiply, that's what it looks like. So I set it to multiply so that the, the black comes through. I also found an area where I colored outside the dimes. Um, but yeah, it's just getting, it's just, um, using the lines as a barrier, but not really worrying about how it looks under those lines. Cause it's not pretty. Oh, I heard my, my big Yorkie. We have a mini Yorkie and a big Yorkie. And I just heard, I just heard big Yorkie. My neighborhood has a lot of dogs, so we've had a, we've had fun seeing all the dogs out and about. And we have this, there's this one down the road. It's like this big Saint, what is it? Bernie's mountain dog or something. It's one of those where it's like the, the brown and the black and the white. And then she, it's, she's very sweet. They all have electric fences. So she like, she just runs around um, her, her, yard so when Teddy and I walk by she follows us from her the first from where her yard begins to where her yard ends and she just goes oof the whole time she's oof and it's it's so cute um but she's got heterochromia or heterochroma so she's got two different color eyes she's got a blue and a brown it's wild and then we have a neighbor that has these two dogs that are basically wolves they're huge their paws are the size of my hand And then we have four dogs. We have a golden retriever, my my little Shih Tzu, and then the two Yorkies. And the two Yorkies are my mom's. One is, she just turned, the older one, the big one is 11 now. And she just turned 11 last month, but she we adopted her when I was in, um, when I was still in college. Good morning from sunny but windy Virginia. Yeah, it's it's uh um it's supposed to have just it's it was really windy here the other day and I'm actually surprised we didn't lose power anywhere because it was that it was like 45 mile an hour sustained gusts. Um Let's see. But um yeah, like today it's really pretty outside, um, but we're supposed to get snow tonight, so that's not that's not fun. My cousin um, on in Western Illinois, they got like five inches yesterday. It was insane. Um, I got caught up far too late in a great book last night. Honestly, like I miss reading till dawn. I used to do that all the time. I'd start reading, and if I didn't. Like, I'd get so into my book that, like, if I knew I had to go to sleep, I'd have to take my hand and cover the next page so that I would stop reading. Um, I was up coloring till after 2 a.m. Nice. Sorry if it's a silly question, but why wouldn't you just use the paint bucket for the letters? Why don't you just use the bucket? Um, because I don't want to use this layer... I turn this off um, this layer is white like there's um, if I color in like I technically could do but I have I could do the, the paint bucket but I have to rasterize the file and then I can't change things later like I don't want to work on just one layer in theory you could but um, if I do a paint bucket on the layer I'm working on that's what happens so I don't like to paint bucket my letters. I like to color them in. It's a nice so I color. If I do a paint bucket, it's a it's actually more tedious for me to do paint bucket than it is for me to um, just color. 
especially because this I'm working off I'm in Photoshop but the file itself is a PS or is a JPEG and it's um you know black on white so another episode of Frozen yeah I'm typing a bad pun. There we go. We're gonna run at this, we're gonna hope, we're gonna pray. Just bear with me. I'm sorry this is this is happening, guys. I know a few people have uh have had issues this week, so at least I'm not alone. <laughs> I think right now too, you take into account how many people are all on the internet from their houses and stuff, like there's there's sure to be latency so like I said I'm back on on Monday I'll have it fixed by then should be working I'll more than likely also be trying to use my green screen because I'm gonna be in front of the computer not off to the side so we're gonna see if it works and have some fun Okay, so we've got that. So I'm gonna come back and do Melody Beattie a little later. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start coloring with um, Adobe Cooler. I'm gonna use this green because I really like it. I think it's pretty. And we're gonna just gonna start coloring in up here and do the leaves. And I'm gonna adjust the tone of this. And I think we actually, I think there's a, is it color? No. I have to find it. There's um, there's a window in there's a window in here somewhere that used to do tones, and I gotta remember where it is. If someone remembers what it is, let me know, cause I haven't used it in a long time. But I know it used to exist. But I feel like I don't know. I don't remember if it was something that I what's brightness keep oh. Um, yeah, I don't remember if it was something that I downloaded as an extension or not, but we're going to adjust the, the tone of it and just like pull it over a little darker and a little lighter to give it a little bit of variation. So we're not coloring with the same green across the entire thing, but I am going to go in and use this one first before I go and add others. And then the difference on this one is I don't have a border set up for the um, for the edges here, so I have to manually erase it. Okay, so now I'm going to go down to this one here. And I'm going to color this in. I still have like 40, no, 50 minutes, 40 minutes, 40 minutes to go. I'm like, I'm like determined to finish this today. I don't know if it'll work. We're going to see. We're going to cross our fingers. Um, and the only place it's going to get a little, a little um, testy is just like right in these areas where it's really small. But I drew out the coloring book page so that it was never like too insanely small to fill. So then on the leaves like this, I'm just alternating the color. And this one goes all the way up here. And then it's going to be this one across opposite. And if it looks like I know what I'm doing, I've already colored this page in before, so I've done it twice. So I have a night, like I kind of know where I'm going with things. Thank 
You got this. Thanks. In PS Window, extensions, Adobe Color Themes. Maybe that's what it was. Ah, uh, no, it wasn't. But that's cool. I didn't know that existed. I learned a thing. I've been using... I've got, I've got colors in my library that I pulled from Adobe Color a little earlier. I do, like, my basic... Like, everything that I do is, like, very similar from project to project, so I don't ever go outside of, like, my my um, routine. So I don't know some of these things that exist, and that's kind of fun. I have to look into that more. Also, I saw Tim said he doesn't like purple, so, like, I have to use purple in here somewhere. I, I don't like purple purple. I like... I like the like nice soft lilac. That's my go-to. Unless it's like haunted mansion purple. I love haunted mansion purple. That I don't like purple is a dad joke. Oh, yep. It's it's been a week. It's been a things are just going right over my head. Um, I've had a lot of conversations with friends where they like make jokes on things, and I'm like, wait, really? And they're like, no, Shauna, that was a joke. And I'm like, I'm very gullible. <laughs> Like one friend was like, I speak, I speak Spanish fluently. And I go, wait, really? And he goes, no. <laughs> but there was like a whole bunch of stuff to the joke that like, that was believable. And then he's like, no, I don't. And I was like, don't, don't mess with my head. I can only handle so much in a day. <laughs> I did a projection map mapping of the Haunted Mansion on my house for Halloween. What? What? Do you have videos? Can you DM that to me? Because I want to see that. I feel like I need to learn projection mapping because, like, growing up, my dad was – my dad would go all out for Halloween if it was going to happen on a weekend. Um, if it was a weekday, he'd just – he'd put up what he could. But we used to have, like, this this – skeleton that he like rigged through the door so it went the the string went up across and down and um ended up uh it was like up across and down so when you pulled the door open it would pop up from the bushes behind people but it was like 50 pounds with with the weight of the of that so you had to like fling the door open so it would pop up and go ha 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 ha, ha and its eyes would light up and, um, it, and he did like, he, he did the, the witch flying into the house before it was like a marketable thing people bought and strobe lights and all kinds of things. Like he loves Halloween and, um, he's also, he's a dentist. So he has those like Billy Bob teeth. So on Halloween he goes and he, when he greets his patients, he put, he's got Billy Bob teeth in and he's like, how you doing? And I'm like, it's very much a dad thing to do. Teddy, where'd you go, baby? Hey. I'm not sure what he's doing. Teddy, come here. Um. Yeah, but so I want to learn projection mapping because I've seen people do projection mapping on pumpkins to make them, like, sing. And, um... This year, like, I couldn't have done it this year because we got snow on Halloween, and I was I was shoveling two feet of snow, or a foot of snow, um, twice. And so I did not end up, um, I'm going to do that underneath on this side and above on this side. Um, but, like, I would love to do the 
I would love to like get like you know five pumpkins and projection map faces onto them and have them be the the singing bus that like when the crypt tours creak um because that would be so fun and I feel like my dad would really enjoy that um but I would have to learn how to do it first and like figure out how to do it so that it doesn't get ruined outside Like, how do you even, like, start to learn projection mapping? Like, that's wild to me. Um, two years ago, I did Nightmare Before Christmas and had zero pop-up flying around. That's so cool. Um, question, that may have been asked already. Why color in Photoshop this way to keep vector lines when you can color in AI? I think I missed something. Um, yeah, you can't use this brush in Illustrator. Also, I did not make this an Illustrator. I made the whole thing in Photoshop. Um, I do not vector my art. It takes away um, little idiosyncrasies that I love in my line work, and it makes my work feel very flat and boring. Therefore, I draw it all in Photoshop. Also, I don't really like to pen tool things. Um, not because I'm lazy, but because, like I said, I can't get the same idiosyncrasies in my lines. Like, they're too perfect in Illustrator versus this. Um, okay, so we got that. I'm going to alternate. Oh, what did I color? That's not a... So this is actually not a full leaf here. I thought this was like that because I drew this, guys. <laughs> I drew this. Uh, okay. Let's... Right, red color in here. And then what I'm going to do once we finish, well, actually, I finished that green. Yay. Okay. Nope. I missed a whole leaf. I missed a whole leaf. Let's get you in. And then I'm going to adjust my color and I'm going to go for the second green. And you do not have to do green. You can do whatever color you want. Um, but like, I'm really digging this color palette. I think this is like, this just looks really nice together. So we're gonna take this green. I'm gonna just adjust it upwards a little bit. You can see like the current and the old, like there's not a big difference between the two. It's just enough to give it a little bit of movement and excited, excitement. Um, <laughs> No, you must use green. You know what, there's a, now that it's warming up, like. Um, I'm really excited. My mom gets to gets to start planting stuff, but we she bought tulip bulbs last year, and she planted them before the ground froze, and so they're they're blooming now. But what she did was she she bought them, and then she told me she um, I went upstairs. She's like, I bought tulip bulbs, and I go, Oh yeah, what what'd you get? She goes, I got like red and yellow. And she goes, and then I got black tulips, and I go, What? She goes, Yeah, I figured you'd like black tulips, and I was like, Yes. Yes, I would. And so she thinks that she threw some of the black tulips into the um, into the garden. So I'm really excited to see black tulips. But we also gave some to my friend Sid um, because I knew she would also like black tulips. So I have to find out if she ended up planting hers or not. Um, but we went to the garden center last summer to get um, to get some plants and stuff to put out so that our, our garden was pretty. And there were these like these petunias and they were black and they were goth petunias and I went up to my mom and I was like can we get these it's like I realize you're going for a really bright and cheery thing but they're black and that's really cool I've never seen black flowers um it was it was wild I was like this is really cool so she bought she bought goth tulips just to like surprise me and make me happy so I'm hoping that those um, pop up and bloom soon, but I don't know how they're doing because right now the snow keeps falling down. The one thing I miss about living in Chicago are the lilac bushes. Oh, and the cubbies. Um, 
so I don't think I've ever seen lilac bushes. I have seen there's um there's one and I can't remember what it's called. It's um I think it's just called like a burning bush, but it's in fall it turns yellow and red and orange and it looks like it's on fire. It's stunning. But my dad was like, you, "No, we're not getting that for the for the yard because they stink." And I was like, "But they're so pretty." We instead we've got maples. Um, we have a silver maple out back that is growing, and then we have some birch trees. I need to draw the birch trees one day. They're pretty. So you see how that's like it's not a huge difference between these two, but it's just enough. Just enough. All right, and then I'm gonna color this here. And then this here. It's very, like I said, very subtle. It's it's just enough to give it some, a little bit of rhythm, which is nice. My dog has emerged from under my bed. I think he's confused because he's not used to just being in my room with the door shut this early in the day. Especially when he knows like the other dogs are up and around and running. What are you doing, Bubba? Come here. Why use Photoshop and not Illustrator for this? Because I like Photoshop. Um, I, I use Photoshop for everything. I don't use Illustrator generally. And because I hand draw everything, um, drawing in Photoshop allows me to keep some of the really nice wonkiness in my lines that I can't achieve in Illustrator. This has been a been a point of contentment for a lot of people today. People are not are not they don't they don't like that I'm not using Illustrator for this. It's my world. I'll do what I want. No, but what what this allows me to do too is if I wanted to to color this so that it looked like I was coloring with pencil, I could. Um, like I've got a a pencil brush here. Like I could color it like this. And this is not a look I could achieve in, in Illustrator easily. So I could make it look like, it's hard to see on here, there. Like I could make it look like it was colored in pencil. Oh, I know why he's all out of sorts. He can hear my, my mom upstairs walking around because she's she's got to go to the grocery store and get stuff for my aunt and uncle. Then you can use the pen. Yeah, like I like to just... Photoshop for all your Photoshop needs. Yeah, like I use I use Photoshop for illustration and I use it for photo editing. Um, hi Tima. I know I like I know I can do that, but I don't want to. <laughs> like I, because like at that point, like if I've already if I've already traced it, why go into Illustrator and retrace it? Unless I have to give it to a client, and it needs to be blown up a thousand times. I, if I've traced it in, in Photoshop, there's no point in me going and tracing it in Illustrator again.
do what you want. Yeah. Photoshop. Yeah. Photoshop does feel more organic than Illustrator. I think, um, like, I think Photoshop has its, has its perks and I think Illustrator has its perks and I've seen people do incredible things in Illustrator that I could never even dream of doing. Um, and I'm sure they feel the same way about, about Photoshop, but I really like, like I've worked in Photoshop since I was 13. So like I'm like 13, 14, somewhere in there, 32 now. So I'm, I'm closing in on close to 20 years working in this, in this, um, particular app. And it's changed a lot over the years. Like when I first started, I learned how to paint with a, with a mouse. And I remember doing like, we had this project in school who, which I painted with a mouse and it was my first class ever in Photoshop. And they wanted us to recreate a, um, recreate a painting and, and do a report on the artist. And so I was, I wanted to pick a female artist and I really liked, um, like artists of like the Renaissance and, and other in years that were where the focus was portraiture and so I did um Vigie Lebron as my artist and I think I only got the piece like half done by the time it was due but my my teacher was like this is that's okay you picked a very complicated one and you got like the main portion of it because most other people did like um the like the Japanese uh uh, block cut the the wave I can't remember who it's by and um, like they picked ones that were like much easier and I look back and I'm like I should have done like Monet or something but I always like to challenge myself and then like I, I used to volunteer at an art camp every summer and they'd have a little art show at the end for all the kids and so the the two ladies that that ran it they um challenged me one summer and they're like we want you to be part of the art show but we're going to challenge you like we want you to recreate starry night in tissue paper and I was like you got it and it took me it took me probably a month to do um and it was a lot of painting on strips of tissue paper with um with watered down glue my board warped but I still did it and I'm, it was really fun. Yeah. It, yeah. Depend like what program you do also is like the, the program that you choose is like very much, um, in terms of like what you want to, what you want to achieve. We had to do a whole 3d fruit painting. Anyone else have to do that one? No. Um, in my intro to design class, we did have to take an object and render it in Illustrator, excuse me, in several different styles. And so I chose um, a corkscrew, but one of those where it's like got the little arms. So that was fun. And then we also had to recreate a stamp in Illustrator or create a stamp in Illustrator from a photo. So of course I didn't choose an easy photo. I chose like an ornament in my tree and it was an ornament with a lot of stuff on it because I can't ever do something that's easy. But it turned out really cool. And then I like never used Illustrator again for rendering things. But a project like this is really good to like get comfortable working in um in Photoshop and stuff because it you know you don't really have to be super accurate with the lines, but also like when I get when I got this Cintiq it was a big difference in terms of the um in in terms of like how big of my surface was and to get comfortable with it so I I had created a coloring book page on my iPad and I imported it and I just spent probably two days tracing it just to get comfortable with this, with this size of this tablet. Um, okay. I'm going to go back to this original green and I'm going to drop down the color to a bit darker than I think I would normally, cause I want it to really stand out. So we're going to color that in.
I'm just going to cut that off there. Yeah, I like that green. It's like it, there's just enough. It's still subtle, but it's just enough. One of the most iconic Japanese artists. Yeah, and I couldn't remember who it was by. I took art history for years in college, but there's certain there's certain pieces that like I could recognize the I could recognize the painter and I know the piece, but I don't know the piece name. There's some that I can do just the piece name, but I can't remember the, the artist. And then there's some that I know both. Um, like my final art history, one of my final art history classes, my friends and I started making flashcards and we'd hop on, um, like hop on FaceTime basically. And we would just quiz each other over and over. And we each had the same cards and we'd flip them up and we had all the info on the back. So we'd send it to the one person and then they'd say it and then they'd flip it and do a different one. And we ended up coming up with, with, different ways to remember it um like there was this one piece by by Seymour Schwast or Schwast I don't remember how it's pronounced but Seymour Schwast I think and he like the image was a was a portrait and he just looked sick and I was like Seymour Schwast so think like Schwasty face which if anyone knows that term it just means you don't feel well um I said he he looks like he's Schwasted and it works like and that was like how we remembered things and so when we saw them in um in our tests, we knew we had we had visual cues as to how to remember it. And then I also had to do it with like dates and things too. I took one art history over the summer with thankfully they didn't make us remember exact dates. She was like, as long as you get the century, it's fine. I was like, thank goodness. Cause I could not have remembered all those dates. She's like, if you know the exact date, put it down, and that's great. She goes, but as long as you get the correct century on the test, we don't. I don't care. Yeah, every time I think of like Japanese woodblock prints, I do think of Hokusai, but I could not pinpoint like what art Hokusai did. But like I love history. I listen to a podcast called Stuff You Missed in History Class, and there's just some really great ones that I love to. I think I'm gonna rotate the canvas now. Um, there's some really great ones to to work with. Still life is a common subject for artists. Whoop, bopped out of my chat. Uh, still life is common subject. Learn lots of learning doing that, dealing with depicting light shadows, glitter. Yeah. Um, I still do, I still do still lives. I, st I don't do them as often as I should. Um, but I do, I do like to do studies of things and I really should do it more often, especially like, like Fresco has the option to do like oil paint. And I, I've done oil paint like a handful of times in my life and I just did not like oils. Um, they took forever to dry and I have a piece that I did in a Bob Ross paint with me class at like the local Michael's store. <laughs> from years ago that I did that I'm really proud of because I followed a tutorial um but I had that for years and then when I was living with my best friend she saw it at my house and she's like why don't we have this in the apartment why is this not hanging up somewhere and I was like because I did it at a Bob Ross paint with me class she goes I'm taking it back to the apartment and we're hanging it up <laughs> um and she actually still has she's got a lot of my a lot of my college art I used to I took a lot of printmaking classes in college um I did printmaking I did intaglio I did um I did etching I did block printing screen printing I mean it was just like it, I did all of them because I had to get credits and um Hokusai did 36 views amount food oh, okay yeah, yeah yeah okay thank you um What? And does anyone know why she doesn't use the bucket? How her brush keeps inside the line? I'm late to the party. The color layer is set to multiply so that my black lines show through. This is what it looks like without the black lines. Actually, the leaves don't look terrible without black lines. They kind of look neat. Anyways, kind of looks like a painting. Ta-da! But I don't use I don't use Illustrator pretty much the gist of like what this whole thing has come down to because everyone a lot of people have asked why I'm not using Illustrator for this because I don't like to use Illustrator <laughs> and this is a Photoshop um, stream it's totally doable to do this in Illustrator but I like 
it's like right now this is like the the enjoyment of of like coloring in versus like hitting the paint bucket and just going bop 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 so all right we're gonna color this one Um, yeah, what was I talking about? Oh, um, yeah, like I did screen printing and all kinds of things in college, and I do miss that because it was really enjoyable. And um, but my my best friend has several of my my screen printing and block printing and stuff pieces um, because I didn't take them with me when I moved away to Orlando. So she was like, "Can I keep these?" And I said, "You sure can." And they they hang in her house now. I, every, every time I go to visit, she's like, "Look, there it is, and there it is, and there it is," and I'm like, "Oh." It's like a museum of my work. Okay, so I just need the green here. And then it's on to the next. What color should we do the flowers, guys? Because we have this really nice flower right here. What color should we do it? There's your options. I'm kind of thinking the blue might look nice. Yeah, I, I mean, there are a lot of lettering artists that do use Illustrator, but their style is a is a different style. Like they use, um, like Ann Chen did a piece last week, and she used Illustrator to render hers out, but her lines and her work is a lot cleaner looking than my work is. So we have two different, very different colors, or two different colors, this is what happens, uh, two different styles. So like mine... Like, if she were to render hers out like she's rendered mine, it wouldn't look as much like her work as it does rendered in Illustrator versus, like, if I rendered this in Illustrator, it would look vastly different and it wouldn't look like my work as much. And, yeah, I'm using the multi the um, multiply layer down here. That's what I have. Um, I don't have each layer set to that. Instead, I have them nested in a group and the group is set to multiply because if I set a layer to multiply it's as soon as it goes over colors here there's that chance that it might interfere and I don't want to do that so I keep that to normal and I let the the um, group be what is layered so I'm going to create a new layer and we're going to use this blue we're going to try this we're going to see how it looks um, it might be too intense and I might have to take it down and mute it a bit but we're going to run with it and see And I don't like to do the same color, like boom, 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 boom. This one has five, so it's a little awkward, but I do three colors for this. So I'm gonna do it across here. And then I'm gonna go into my color picker and just adjust the color a little lighter and then a little lighter. But this way we're still using a limited color palette and the, and the only way that it's like you're, we're limiting ourselves to a very limited color palette and the only thing that's kind of changing is the fact that we are adjusting the tone so it looks like there are more, but they're still in the same color family. Um, I presume pen along with a tablet, yeah. Yeah, I've got a, a Cintiq tablet in front of me. But you could do this in Adobe Fresco or your app of choice. And you just have to make sure you set, set your layer to a... Um, the, you have to set the blend mode. That's the word I've been looking for all morning. The blend mode to multiply. I feel like I should know these things better off the top of my head. But sometimes my brain just doesn't want to work. And that's this morning. Photoshop is capture in it too. You can do the same things in, with a photo as capture in the iPhone. What? I feel like I remember hearing this. Is that this thing? Adobe color themes. Is it Adobe color themes? Yeah. I don't know. Um, oh, I can add these to my swatches. Now that's cool. Um, yeah, it's 
the things that Photoshop is coming out with are really incredible. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to move it up a little bit so you can see my before color, my after color, and it's not that different, but just enough. So we're going to color here. I'm going to back out of this real quick. Just like, look how nice these colors are working together. They're so good. I never would have come up with this. I never would have come up with this palette. Like, that's because I found it on Adobe Color. I never would have come up with this sort of palette, and I love it. Um, click the plus sign and choose Create from Image. Where? Hold on. Oh, here. What? Hold on. <gasps> what? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna have so much fun later. Oh, this is cool. Okay. Oh, funny. It's pulling from this layer. <laughs> That's so fun. <laughs> okay. Oh, what was that? What was that? Hey, Ted. Color themes. <gasps> oh, look. Look at that. Muted. Dark. Oh, my gosh. That's cool. Okay, I learned a thing. We've got 10 minutes left, so let's let's run. Um, yeah, I saw a team that said, don't forget to drink water, so water break. Hi, we have a guest, hang on. Come here, you wanna come say hi? Come say hi? Come say hi. We have a guest. A very floofy guest. Okay, so I'm gonna keep coloring. He came over because he wants a snack, but he is to huggle he has to snuggle before he gets a snack. No worries, guys. Paul Trini demoed that a while ago. Yeah, I, I remember hearing about that, and I just haven't, like, I didn't dive in to explore it yet. That's so cool. Because I love Adobe Capture. I think it's such a fun program. I was using it when I was moving up here because I, like, as we were driving through Kentucky, all the all the leaves were changing, and they were, um, they were these, this, like, bright yellow that I've never seen before. I should use it more this this fall because our neighbors have these maples that turn bright red and it's incredible. Okay, and then I'm gonna take my color and I'm just gonna lighten it a little bit more and I'm gonna mute it a little bit by pulling it closer to the grays. I will eat a snack if he's sitting here. I know. These are his, like, his freeze-dried chicken snack. Yeah, he won't eat it from my hand. You can get that later. You want to sit down? Is that a Shih Tzu or a Pekingese? He's a he's a Shih Tzu. Um, he's a Shih Tzu, but I think he's a Lhasa Apsa mix too. Like he's he doesn't like he's got the he's got the short nose, but he doesn't have like the ran into a wall nose. But he's like Shih Tzu size, so I don't know. He was a he was a rescue, so I have no idea if I ended up with a purebred or not. He just needed a home and I needed a friend. And that's how we got together seven years ago. 
Okay, so I'm gonna do, what color should these tomatoes be? I kinda think, will it be too much if I do them like that? I don't know, we'll see. We'll try them like this. We'll see if the, this red is too much, and if it is, then we'll we'll change it. <laughs> dog is the technical term. Yeah, he said dog. He is Mr. Mr. Teddy Bear, the director of cuteness in my studio. He has a fan club. He has pins and patches of his face. Made them a few years ago. They were a big hit at conferences. <laughs> All right, we'll put you down. Okay. All right, Ted, say, say bye bye. This is bye bye. All right, you want your snack? I'll throw you a snack. There you go. careful paint on the right layer yeah um yeah I'm doing a lot of the other color just sort of like on its layer I don't want to separate this one out right now just be for time's sake because we've got five minutes and I had such hope I'd finish and um I did not I will not finish but you know I'll finish it up and post it to uh to the socials when it's done Have you guys been drawing along? Because if you are, make sure you share. Um, there's a hashtag Adobe coloring book that you can use um, to show what you've done. Whether you've done my coloring book page or like another artist's um, and they come out with a new chapter. They're um, releasing a new chapter every Monday. So you'll get a new round of artists on Monday. After my stream today, we have the Adobe we have the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. Um, Kathleen's going to host that. She's awesome. You should stay for that. Honestly, there's a whole great lineup all day. If you go, if you look below the the video, there's you can see everything that's coming up next. Um, I highly recommend sticking around for as many as you can. I'm going to do this one blue too. I think that would be pretty. I'm going to do this muted blue. No, it's too muted for the for the grouping. This is a brighter one, so I have to do... No, it didn't click. There we go. On the lower part of a page, among the berries, maybe one bug with big googly eyes would be funny. Yeah. I considered adding bugs into this and I was like, nah, I already have so much going on in here. But I did do, um, for another client, they had a, they requested a search and find coloring book page. So I did this whole, this crazy, like, probably one of the most intense illustrations I've done in a long time. And it was just like, everything was in there and I drew bugs and animals and like things I didn't even know I could draw. Um, they ended up loving it, so that was cool. All right, we're down to three minutes. So I've got like three minutes, but I've got like a little leeway, but I want to be able to have time to close this out. Um, but yeah, does anyone have any like last questions before this is, is done before we're done with this today? Um, highly recommend you stick around for the other streams today because there's a lot of great ones and you would be remiss to, to miss them. I'm going to go darker on this. Whoa, no, this is a weird glitch that's happening, but I think it's just a, it's a, it just started happening, so I gotta figure out what's going on with it. Sean, I will send you projection mapping files shortly. Have to run, see y'all in the next stream. Thank you, I'm excited to see those. 
Thanks for tuning in. Hi, Alex, how are you? Is there a quick way to color the background? I guess another layer. Yeah, like coloring the background is a little harder. Um, you can do like, <coughs> sorry. What you can do is duplicate. <coughs> Darn it, hang on. Okay, there we go. Um, you can copy, you can duplicate your, whoop and then you'll set your coloring book page. I have mine locked, but you set it to multiply. Um, and then what you can do is under that, you can go do an adjustment layer and you can do solid color. And then that's how you can easily change your color. Hey, Kathleen. Yeah, guys, definitely stick around. Kathleen's up next. She's awesome. She's here, gonna be doing the daily the Photoshop daily creative challenge and it's going to be it's going to be um, a lot of a lot of fun I see the internet hamsters are working hard today it's been a time it's it's been a rough time with my internet today I'm not sure what's going on but we gotta we gotta fix that so because you and I are I think you I and you and myself and Leon want to stream again soon and I would like to not drop out every five seconds again um, so I, I, I gotta figure out what that, what in the heavens is going on. But yeah, guys, um, Alex Lazarus is going to be streaming later today. He's closing out the day and he's, are you doing more 36 days of type stuff? Cause that was really cool yesterday. You always say that you're not going to type and then you do that. And I'm just like, <laughs> Uh, I got like three more minutes I can run with this. Three. I think I can do this. But like, look how fun this is. Look at that. Look how, th how things are, are, are working out. It's like that, it's that, it's that meme going around. Look at us. Who would have thought? Look at us. Yeah, I'm doing C today. Nice. Yeah, we definitely have to do a do a 36 days stream because I am severely behind on my 36 days of type. My 36 days of type, I'm very behind. Um, I did F on the stream a couple weeks ago, but I still have not done C or no, I still haven't done D and E. So I gotta play catch up, but I'm doing them in a children's book style, so they take me a bit longer to do than like it normally would have. Um, I saw someone asked if I've ever illustrated a children's book. I have not. I did the wrong color here. So I'm just gonna erase here just so I don't. Ah, no, 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 no. There we go, okay. Um, yeah. So I definitely, like, I got to play catch up on that. But I've never illustrated a children's book, but I am working on one that I've written and I'll be illustrating. So I'll more likely stream that at some point. But um, I'm really enjoying the process of that. But it's been a lot of back and forth where I started to, didn't like what I was coming up with, and then I stopped and I took a break from it to see if I could come up with something better with it. So that's the the phase I'm in now. Um, Teddy Bear has appeared twice now. Yes, he did. He's, now he's, I don't know. I think he's on the other side of, oh no, he's on my bed. He's, he's behind a blanket, so it's, it's hiding him. But he's just chilling on my bed. Like a good boy. Um, uh, okay, that flower's done. Guys, I got so close to finishing. I got so close. Um, I fostered a Bichon. A minute awkward face to get stuck on yeah that's that's true at least it's not an awkward face um so it's i'm at that point where i gotta i gotta sign off i thank you guys so much for joining in i had such a fun time um this has been a great time i'll be back on monday um uh, doing uh, adobe fresco demoing i have a lot of I, i've got a really fun um thing planned we're gonna have a ton of fun we're gonna enjoy it 
Um, stick around for the Adobe Photoshop Daily Challenge and stick around for all of our awesome streamers today. Thank you guys. I had a great time. I will see you next week. Stick around. It's going to be fun. Great things are happening. Bye. Stay safe. Stay healthy.